What I have here today is a defective magnetron that was removed from a microwave oven. This particular magnetron is defective because the uh, connector, oops, there's a short right there where it's burned through this insulator and uh, it just shorts to the body of the magnetron. So what I want to do with this one is take it apart for these ring magnets that it has in it. But there's a problem with magnetrons. This pink insulator can be a problem. It might be aluminum oxide, which is safe, but it could be the quite poisonous beryllium oxide. There's really no way for me to know which kind of insulator I have here. So in the case of beryllium oxide, it's quite safe as long as it's whole. But if it gets smashed and dust forms, the dust is quite hazardous if you breathe it. So in taking the magnetron apart, we've got to make sure that we never do anything that can crack or break that insulator. The metal frame of the magnetron is made in two pieces a U-shaped piece down here, and then a flat top piece with two little partial sides that snaps in from the top. There's also a generous hole in this top piece with a uh, brass mesh gasket in it. So we can open the magnetron's frame by uh, prying with pliers and screwdrivers over here, well away from the danger point of the insulator. Here I'm starting to work one corner open with the screwdriver. Again, make sure that you stay well away from that insulator. There, one corner is open. And we've done no harm whatsoever. We're nowhere near that insulator. Let's see if we can uh, work corner number two open. Ah, number two is open, and we're still nowhere near that insulator. We're not harming it in any way. Let's go for corner number three. Bend the little tab up inside. This metal is fairly thick. It does take a little effort, but again, no harm to the insulator. We're nowhere near it, and corner number three is opened. We'll turn it once more. It's a little tab that you bend up with the needle nose pliers. Oh, I missed got it that time. So we'll try with the screwdriver on corner number four. Eh, we're nearly free here. There we go. It's just held in by the magnetic Force. Now we can lift it off carefully, and this magnetron is now open. 
The mesh washer made of brass can simply be lifted off now. And next we'll look at removing magnets. At this point the magnet is uh, held in place by a washer that just needs to be lifted up. I already got the washer free of the magnet, but the washer is quite a bit bigger than that beryllium oxide insulator, so again no harm is done. There's plenty of clearance to remove the washer. The magnet can now be lifted off. It's quite strong. There we go. Ferrite magnet number one has been recovered and our insulator is still in perfect condition. Let's now pop the cover on the terminal box. It's usually just sprung on. Start it with the screwdriver and it'll come off. We can see that lovely pink stuff is at the other end too. Let's avoid doing any harm to this insulator too. In order to free the tube and remove the last magnet, we need to cut the circuit free from the two pins of the base of the tube, so we need to cut here and cut there with some side cutting pliers. The cuts are made and there's no harm to those insulators. We'll now be able to remove the tube and its aluminum cooling fins from the magnetron frame by simply pulling up. We've now recovered the former magnetron. Now, interestingly enough, this would function as a high voltage diode, actually. This is still a perfectly good high vacuum diode. And in the frame, we have our last magnet, which uh, <clears throat> had a good magnetic grip, but there it is. So our hall for the disassembly is a, uh, a bunch of scrap metal at the back. We have a high voltage diode now, two ferrite ring magnets, and some kind of a brass mesh washer. Anyway, that's how you uh, take apart a magnetron without breaking the beryllium oxide insulators. I hope you enjoyed this, and there'll be plenty more video to come. Thanks for watching.